Okay, we have the graphing test here coming up, and I want to uh, make sure that you're ready. I'm not going to try to cover everything that you possibly need to know because there's just it would take me all hour and you wouldn't have any work time. And I think it's good for you to have work time on the day before we take the test. So today we'll get some work time. But first, I want to make sure you get how to do a few of the major topics anyway. Piecewise is one of the big ones. So we're going to talk about a piecewise function that is absolute value of x minus 3 between negative infinity and 3. And it is the absolute, no, let's do square root of x plus 2 between 3 and, let's say, no, 3 isn't going to be so nice for that. Let me, let me change this a little bit. x uh, 3 plus 1 plus 1, there we go. Between 3 and, let's say, uh, 8. That's going to not leave much of the graph left for the other thing, so hold on just a second. Uh, yeah, I guess I have to do it to 8. And then at uh, the last part will just be simply uh, x from 8 to 10. Okay, so this, I have to say which one owns it. If I go like this, then the 3 must be owned here by the red one. And let's say that it also owns the 8. And then this 8 to, in, to let's say to infinity here. Okay. There's a good piecewise function to graph. It's got three parts. I'd like you right now to give it a shot. And after a couple minutes, I'll give you some help. If you have no clue where to start, start by making a little XY chart for this guy. And only use numbers that are in this zone. Only use numbers that are between negative infinity and 3. So no point in using like 5 because it's outside the zone. All right, so make a little XY chart. If nothing else, start with that. I'll pause for a minute while you give that a shot. Numbers, if you're supposed to be picking numbers between negative infinity and 3, why not pick 3? Just 3 itself. I'll put in 3, and I'll see what happens. If I put a 3 in right here, 3 minus 3, you know, it's the worst place ever to sit for the lesson part. Would you please come over here and sit for the lesson part here? I'm fine if you move back over there for the work time, because otherwise you just can't see. All right. So if I have a 3, absolute value of 3 minus 3, that's really 3 minus 3 is 0. Absolute value of 0 is 0. So 3, 0 should have been on your graph. Raise your hand if you had 3, 0. Okay, good. And is it actually owned by that point? No, because it says a parenthesis around here. So it can't be the 3. So 3, 0 right there is an empty spot right there for our absolute value graph. Okay, now i got to pick things that are smaller than that, like 2. Put in a 2. When I put in a 2 here, 2 minus 3 makes, hmm, let me think, 1, and then it's negative 1, actually, but the absolute value makes it 1. So that would be 2, 1. It's right there. And I can kind of tell where this is going. This is going to be a V-shape, so I can just keep going up like this, can I? Sure I can. If I want to check another point and say, well, what about if I put in x is negative 1? Negative 1. Well, then it becomes negative 1 minus 3 makes negative 4. Absolute value makes positive 4. So negative 1, positive 4. Yep, I confirmed it. It's working. So now I can just go like that all the way to the end. All right, good. There's the beginning of the graph. Raise your hand if you had that right. Okay, next part is a square root graph that's been shifted up 1. You don't really want to make a square root graph like right here and shift it up 1 because then it's going to overlap. So personally, I'd rather have you just make an XY chart for that, just carefully. So I'm going to... Uh, take a new color, I'll use blue for this guy, and say x, y, what are some numbers that are between 3 and 8? Like, how about 3? 3 plus 1 is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. 3 comma 2. So I'm going to get this black one out of here because I told you that one would not work. 3 comma 2. 3 comma 2 is right there. See how they don't just like run right into each other? It starts off at a slightly different spot. It starts there. Now I'm going to stick in another number like, uh, let's another number 8 would work nicely. 8 plus 1 makes 9, square root of 9 is 3. So 8 comma 3. There, and this is one of these kind of graphs. It's slowly rising like that. There we go. And it owns those endpoints. 3 and 8 have dots on them. And then from 8 to infinity, from 8 to infinity is just x. This is a little weird. It's just x. 
Well, really, what's this? This is really y, so it's y equals x. Do you know where the line y equals x is? It's just this line right here. I missed slightly. But anyway, it's the line, it's just the line y equals x. That's one of your parent functions you're supposed to have memorized. So the only part that pertains to me, though, is this part. Why? Because it's something else for this whole other time. I have to get rid of all of this because it would be overlapping the blue graph. Get rid of that. There we go. Just that part. If I wanted to make an XY chart for it, I could. I'll prove it. Here's an XY chart for the line Y equals X. If I stick in X is uh, 8, it'll say Y is 8. Because 8 equals 8, right? 9 would be 9, etc. So 8, 8, 9, 9, 10, 10. And then why would I get this graph marked wrong? I have one little thing wrong. You need a circle up there. That's correct. Because you need to imply that you do not touch at that spot. Because otherwise, it would fail the vertical line test. You put in the vertical line like this, and you say, does it ever touch twice? And here it would have if I hadn't put that empty spot on the end of that green line. Okay? So watch out for those endpoints like that. That's critical. All right. So that is called piecewise. Next, let's talk about you have a squiggly looking graph given to you. Like, let's say, uh, that, that was very symmetrical. Hold on. Let's go down here to there and then up to there. Okay. So say this is my starting graph, and that's called f of x. Let's say that they did the absolute value deal. Do you remember, oops, do you remember what to do? If you do, sketch what you think the answer is. If you don't, realize that you're behind. Because this is the review day, and you're not supposed to be learning new things today. Now this, it's very difficult to do the XY chart for. I don't think it's worth trying to make an XY chart for it. You could, but you'd have to try to graph all these points. There's a lot of curves going on. It would be difficult. If you needed to, you'd say, what are the XY points of the original parent function, which is this? negative 3 comma 0 and this which was negative 2 comma 1 and this which was 0 comma negative 2 and this which was 2 comma 0 and then you'd want to absolute value the y's okay so then oh and there was another important point right here where I touched that that was important believe it or not because that that's where it's going to start flipping from that's another reason this isn't the greatest way to do this. Uh, negative 1 comma 0. Yep. Okay. And now, if I do my ref uh, absolute valuing of the f of x's, the y's, these are the y's, right? So I'm really absolute valuing the y's. I could absolute value, and that doesn't change this or this. All these stay the same because they're positive numbers in the first place. Absolute value is only going to change that number right there to a positive 2. That means the whole beginning of the graph stays the same. This one point changes from a negative 2 to a positive 2, which goes up there. And see how it totally changes how the graph looks, though? The blue one is the correct answer. Raise your hand if you had that. All right, good. I hmm? don't oh, know. Okay. All right. So if I were you, I probably wouldn't have used the points method, although it would have worked. Let's say that you just think of it this way. Wherever the y's are negative, those are the ones that the absolute value is going to actually affect. So these down here are the ones that are going to affect it. And so those get reflected back up again. That's another way to think of it. All right. Now I'm going to go back to this, and I'm going to say... All right, instead of absolute value on the outside, now we do absolute value on the inside. Remember how to do these? Mm -hmm. 
This in a way is simpler if you if you uh, remember what to do. And really this XY chart would not work at all for this. I'm not even going to try to show you the answer for this. I mean, I'd absolute value the X's, but the Y's could not stay the same. Because when I change this from negative 3 to a positive 3, the Y won't be the same. The positive 3 has a different output. So anyway, bottom line is don't try to do the XY chart for this. It won't work. Okay. You yeah, should say to yourself, where are my x's negative? Because that's going to change something. Absolute valuing them will make the negative x's go away. And the negative x's are all these things over here. That's where x's are negative. So all that should go away. And you should have said, the final answer is that. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Ooh, not many of you. Let's try another one like that then. Okay, I'll give you a different function, and we're going to do absolute value of the x part. All right, so here's the parent function. I missed that a little bit at the end. Okay, there's your function. Try doing absolute value on the inside. I'm going to pause while you work on that. Okay, so what should you have done? You should have looked for the x's that were negative and get them to be changed. That's where the x's are negative. So that's the part that gets changed. Okay. Then, it changes by taking this part and reflecting it over. So the final answer for this one would be not just this new part. Some people get confused on that, that it's just this black part here. It's this black part here, but it's also, it's also this other part. Because this part of the function doesn't change. It's still there. So it's that whole big M there. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Now I had almost everybody. Okay, good. Now let's uh, see about the most common really kind is they give you a shape and then they say let's move this shape this way like f of 2x plus 1. I would bet that only half the people in this room are going to get this right. I really think a lot of people are going to do something wrong. I'm going to tell you what, but I'm going to see if you take it seriously and see if you... Uh, are sure you know what to do on this guy. Okay, so there's my original parent function. And you need to take it and move it and stretch it or shrink it. And a lot of people screw this up, so give it a shot. And I'll tell you in a second what to do. I'm gonna make this a little darker. Some people I think have trouble seeing it. Okay, here's what you do on this kind. You start by saying, all right, I've got to do two things, and I wish we'd all you first. It's critical whether you do, that you do them in the right order or you'll get it wrong. Okay, I can't just do it either way I want. What's normally first is multiply. That should normally be first, but we're on the inside, so things are opposite of normal. So it's that one. Okay, so if it's the plus one, that means to move the whole thing to the left, one. All right, so I'm going to take everything and move it to the left one. Now, it's, I scribbled so much that it's going to take a second to move all my pieces. There, okay, I moved it to the left one. Now, here's the part where a lot of people screw up. This thing has to be half as wide. First of all, some people think, oh, twice as wide. No, or on the inside, half as wide. So this part has to be half as wide. This would, every point on here has to be half as wide as it was. This point was at, at three, negative 3, and that's its width, so to speak. 
So it's half of that, so it's right there. And this was at negative 5, so it's half of that, which is 2 and a half. So here is my newly shrunk down answer. It's half as wide as it used to be. And it got moved to the left one. Okay. Raise your hand if you had that one right. That's about half of you. Almost exactly. Okay. And I bet it was that half part that screwed you up. Let me show you. You remember how I keep think, saying that, the, that those XY charts are like huge and they're really, really handy? XY would have worked well for this. You take the original parent points and it'll work well. So I'm going to rewind back to where my parent graph was. Okay. And if I do the XY chart for this, I start by writing down the parent points of this graph. Uh, negative 4 comma 0, negative 2 comma 2, uh, 0, 0. Anytime it touches the x-axis, it's a good idea to write it down. 1, negative 1, and the last one's 2, 0. And then I go through and do these changes to it. But remember, it's counterintuitive. So instead of adding 1 to everything, subtract 1 from everything. Remember, we do that part first, and the order matters. Because if I add one and then double it, and versus adding one and or doubling it and then adding one, it'll be different. So anyway, I got to do this first. So instead of add one, I subtract one because it's counterintuitive. So instead of negative four, I have negative five. Subtracting one from everything. Subtracting one from zero, negative one. Subtracting one from one, zero. Subtracting one from two is one. And now, what's this two do? It cuts everything in half. Remember, counterintuitive, opposite of doubling it. Cut it in all in half. So I divide them all by 2. Divided by 2. Divided by 2. 0 divided by 2 is 0. And divided by 2. There's my new points. If I graph those points, negative 2 and a half comma 0. Negative 1 and a half comma 2. Negative 1 and a half and 0. Negative 0, or sorry, 0 and negative 1. If I graph all those points, it comes out exactly where it should be. Okay. Last kind. And if I had to say there was a most important kind, it's this. Because these are the R2s. And if you're going to not do well in this test, at least you've got to get the R2s right. Because if you get 75% on the R2s, you've locked in a C at least. And then you have a chance at an A or a B. But if you don't do well on the R2s, you still can't even get an A. Remember, you've got to get at least three-fourths of the R2s right to get an A. So everybody wants these R2s right. So if I give you something like this, negative 2, absolute value, x minus 3, plus 1, this should be like a, oh, easy points. Give, give, me, give me some easy points. So, xy chart, though. I'm telling you, a lot of you will screw this up without the xy table. So give me some xy points on this puppy, and then make a quick sketch of where you think it is. All right, if you're stuck, here's a way to start. Pick any number. Any number that worked nice with this 3 here, like maybe a 3. Okay, if I put in 3, 3 minus 3 is 0. Absolute value is 0 is 0. 0 times 2, or negative 2. Negative 2 times 0 is 0. Plus 1 is 1. 3 comma 1. Raise your hand if you had 3 comma 1. All right, good. Now I'm going to put in something else, like let's say 4. Put in a 4 here. 4 minus 3 is 1. Absolute value of that is 1. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 1 Makes negative 1. 4, negative 1. Raise your hand if you had that right. Okay, good. And then if you wanted to, yes, you could do this by saying, I like to make the V dots and then just move them. Go ahead. It's just harder, I think. Because you're going to have to do uh, four things to it. You're going to have to go right 3. Then you're going to have to move it up 1. Then you're going to have to be careful on these two. Stretch before you shrink, although technically you could shrink anyway. Stretch before you flip, sorry. So this is next, so I'd have to, after I've moved it to the right, three and up one, and I got my new V over here, now I've got to double all my Ys. So be careful, this is already up one, uh, let's see, up one, so I got to double it to up two, so the whole graph's going to actually move up again, because you're doubling the Ys. So this part gets more complicated, but Jay, basically I know that the graph's in there somewhere, and then the last thing is this negative, which is a flip, an up-down flip. All right, so then the question becomes, do I want to flip it all the way down here? Or do I want to flip it over right here? 
So anyway, there's a, there's a lot of complications to that way, but I would answer those by just saying, hey, I'm just going to graph 3, 1 over 3, up 1. 4, negative 1 over 4, down 1. There we go. And I'm going to keep making a few more points. I'll put in a 5. 5 minus 3 is 2. Absolute value of 2 is 2. Times negative 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. 5, negative 3. Look at that. I can see where that thing's going. Now, if I want to get some more to the left so that I can see it like going down here, I might want to go uh, to the left of the 3. So maybe put in 2. And then I'll have 2 minus 2. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Absolute value is 1. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Plus 1 is negative 1. 2, negative 1. Look at that. It's the V starting to go down. So it will. And there we go. That's what it should look like. Raise your hand if you have that one right. Okay. Good. That's the easiest kind. All right. That leaves us like 20 minutes left for you to work. I'm going to give you the review packet for the test. Strongly encourage you to ask me questions if you get stuck on things. That's the main stuff that you need to know to be able to do well on tests on Monday. Mr. Mayne?